Hi, my name is Phil, I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the ongoing problem that Boris Johnson has in being exposed by Prime Minister's questions and how Jacob Rees-Mogg, good old Moggy, came up with a suggestion that has unfortunately been widely ridiculed. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, Jacob Rees-Mogg, one of the arch-Brexiteers, and a man who likes to sound as if he's an intellectual, but is in fact, like many cabinet ministers, a little bit thick. He's one of those who uses unnecessarily long words in order to mask the fact that he isn't actually very clever and that he isn't actually saying anything particularly clever either. And his latest scheme to help Boris Johnson highlights that perfectly. So the problem as he and others see it, is Keir Starmer. Uh, the new leader of the Labour Party is ripping Boris Johnson, a new arsehole, every Wednesday when Parliament is sitting. And Johnson has no substance. Even the people who are trying to help Boris Johnson, his own supporters, say this. He, they acknowledge that the problem is that Boris Johnson is, has no substance. He's not capable of beating Starmer in an actual debate. So what he needs to, to mask his incompetence is braying Tories behind him. Because the way it works is as follows. If you are an uncritical observer of Prime Minister's questions, Keir Starmer says, stands up and says something very clever and his benches cheer and you go, oh, that was a clever thing he just said there. Then Boris Johnson stands up and, and says blamange or something. And all of his MPs stand up and cheer and bang their feet and wave their order papers and the uncritical observer goes, oh, he, he, he made a good point there. I, I don't understand it myself, but it must have been terribly clever because look at all the cheering. And of course, he's got an 80 strong majority. He can make more noise. And the impression you get when you've watched this as the uncritical observer is, well, the opposition all cheer Starmer and, and you know the government benches all cheer Boris Johnson. Clearly, they're only cheering for the person that they support. So in actual fact, it's a bit of a draw, really, isn't it? And they don't see Boris Johnson exposed. But the problem is that Boris Johnson isn't getting the cheering at the moment. It's deathly silent. So the solution is obvious. Boris Johnson needs his MPs back. You need to pack the Commons Chamber with those MPs to make enough noise to fool the plebs into thinking he's doing all right in parliamentary exchanges. But social distancing makes this impossible. Two metres apart from other MPs means a maximum of 50 MPs allowed in the chamber at any one time. So how do you get them all in safely? Moggy to the rescue. He observed that checkout staff have perspex screens between them and the customer to offer some protection. Presumably he was told this by his butler because I doubt he's ever been into a supermarket or similar shop himself. So the scheme is as follows. He pictures in his head, there's presumably a lot of space for those thoughts, that the MPs are all sat as he imagines them pre-crisis. And then he goes, well, now imagine perspex screens between them all. I mean, they're thin. They don't take up much room. And you go, yeah, uh, unfortunately, people have spotted a few flaws in this plan. I'm sure you may have spotted the odd one yourself. It has to be thought about quite carefully. So first of all, people have said, well, OK, Moggy, yeah, we get that. The problem is you then need perspex screens in front of them all because they're sat in rows and, and obviously behind them as well. And then as you're talking and cheering and things like that, obviously, you know, droplets of your saliva going into the air. So you need, you need, but basically you need to be completely enclosed in a perspex box. This is not conducive to your continued breathing for a start. So the next thing that would be needed would be an individual oxygen supply for each MP. But then you've got another little problem. See, hospitals have been running out of oxygen. There's been a bit of a shortage. So how would it look if you came up with a solution to get MPs physically in the chamber that meant that each one needed their own oxygen supply whilst hospitals were struggling to get oxygen for patients who were dying or dying without it at any rate? And then the ridicule sort of ended there. But I was thinking, hang on a minute. No, 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 no. I mean, let's, let's continue this, shall we? First of all, he's picturing the MPs already seated in their perspex boxes, except he just conceived it as perspex sheets either side of them. 
How do you get them there? I mean, you'd have to have one MP come into the chamber and sit in their place and then the perspex be set up around them and then the next one in, the perspex around. How, how would this work and how long would it take if it did work? You'd, you'd almost have to build a whole new thing. But how, you know, you have to assemble the box around them and then fix up the oxygen supply. And you have to do that one MP at a time. How long would it take to get every MP in? And then you think to yourself, so the, the first MP to have to go in, you know, five hours later when the last one's finally in place, well, what happens when the first one needs a piss? What happens then? And the thing is, you have to wonder, how did this work in his head? You know, he said this thing. How, how did he conceive of it in his head? And it just illustrates, as I said at the start, just how dumb some of these people in government really are when you think through their ideas. I mean, obviously this idea was a non-starter. Why even articulate it? Because he thought it was something that someone could do. You know, ideas that they clearly haven't thought through, which suggests that they're not capable of thinking ideas through. And these are the people at the head of our government. These are the people who make up government cabinet ministers. And, and people wonder why we're in the mess like we are now. But anyway, there it is. Your little starter for Saturday. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.